you know how the story goes, already recorded this, you know, that something messed up. I literally got to the last sentence and then it said card full. What is that about? Anyway, there's something about Galaxy S flagship devices that I can't quite put my finger on. Maybe it's the quality, maybe it's the design, but I've yet to figure that one out. It was the same when I used the Galaxy S7 Edge, the S10, and now the S20 Ultra. Today, we're going to be talking about it in 2021. What's good, what's not so good, and should you actually buy one? Well, I've been using it as my daily driver. Damien Wilde's favourite term, by the way. Spam it in his comment section. Uh, speaking of which, he provided the phone for me today. So, as I said before, using it as my daily driver. We are going to be talking about the S20 Ultra in 2021. So, you can get one of these on eBay for around £600, which is, makes it, it makes it a value smartphone, which is not the same as budget, by the way. Don't confuse those. Don't think that I think everyone can afford £600 for a smartphone. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that you're getting 98% of all flagship components, you know, from 2021 in this. You're getting flagship level specs, flagship level hardware. This is, for all intents and purposes, a flagship smartphone in 2021 for 600 quid that's you know that's half the price of a current flagship that is really good value for money this will get you one in good condition with maybe a couple of small marks on it i do talk about used pricing not brand new pricing because i think anyone who buys a brand new smartphone probably has enough money to not watch a review it doesn't matter anyway this thing is absolutely huge it's got a 6.9 inch quad hd or 120 hertz amoled display and it's simply put quite beautiful. The bezels are small, the punch hole is centered in the correct position, and the sheer size makes watching videos, TV, films, and playing games a joy on the S20 Ultra. I'm usually more of a fan of smaller devices, and I don't like big devices like this. However, as I said at the beginning, that quality, that something about this made me want to keep using it, and I use it maybe a little longer than I should because I should be moving on to the next smartphone. But this is a seriously nice phone to use, even though it's huge and even though I don't have the biggest hands. Of course, you can only run this thing at 120Hz if you switch down to Full HD resolution, which I don't think is an issue. I really don't see it being a problem. If you can actually tell the difference day to day and not holding it right up to your face between Quad HD and Full HD at 6.9 inches at about, I don't know, two feet, a foot and a half away from your face, then cool, here's a medal. <laughs> Because, like, it doesn't matter. It's a smartphone. People get so hung up with numbers when it comes to technology, it drives me mad. Performance isn't an issue with the S20 Ultra. Just going to put that out there. And why should it? I mean, it's got flagship components and they're only, like, a year old. <laughs> this model is the 12GB RAM, 128GB storage model with the Exynos chipset. And it's been good as gold. I'm not a huge gamer, but games seem to run just fine, and switching between apps, etc., was absolutely flawless, as it should be. Given my recent experience with the S10, expect this performance to last maybe another year before slowly tapering off and slowing down, and maybe in like four years you want to get rid of it. Battery life is also very, very good. It's a 5,000 mAh battery which is pretty sizable, but also it's almost a seven inch screen, so it should be this big. Now I was getting, and I am getting, two days of battery life out of this thing. I usually have about two and a half to three hours of screen on time per day, which translates to five to six hours of screen on time with this thing. About 40 to 50% brightness most of the time, mostly Wi-Fi with a bit of LTE used there as well. And like I said, I'm not a huge gamer. I don't watch loads of videos on my smartphone. I sit at the computer most of the day working. So I use the computer for that kind of thing. If you're a more active user, you know, maybe it's going to last you a full day, maybe a little bit more than that. But, you know, if you do every single thing on your smartphone and you're really hammering it, it doesn't matter because it's got 45 watt fast charging. So you can just top it up in you know minutes. It's awesome. And if you don't like using the wire, 15 watt wireless fast charging as well. So it's really the best of all worlds. I'm a huge fan of Samsung's One UI, which you'll find in its third iteration on Android 11 here. It's a clean interface with a good mix of added features and expect another two platform upgrades on this thing.
Speaking of the cameras, this setup is incredibly impressive. There's a 108 megapixel main shooter with a huge sensor, a 12 megapixel ultra wide with a slightly smaller sensor, a 48 megapixel four times optical periscope zoom, and a 40 megapixel selfie shooter. Throw in 8K 30p video and Ultra HD 60p, and you've got a camera package that really does justify that huge camera bump on the back. And I do mean huge, but when you've got it in a case, it doesn't matter that much. The images that come from this thing are, simply put, brilliant. Loads of dynamic range, contrast, great colours, and plenty of detail too. I shot a fair few images all the way zoomed in, and I was impressed by the quality of the periscope zoom. Even though this is a four times, not a five times like Huawei's options, you are able to go to sort of 10, 20, and 50 times zoom and still get usable-ish images. You're not gonna be printing these and putting them on the wall, but you know, for social media, absolutely fine. Also, you can do people watching, which is a bit creepy, but you know, you do you. The big 108 megapixel main sensor produces brilliant photos thanks to its massive size, both in resolution and physically, like the dimensions of it, it's amazing. It does struggle a little bit with focus, but it's not awful. It just means you have to be a little bit more finicky with it. It also means that if you're taking photos of something that's moving quickly, you're gonna have more issues with focusing. You kinda of need to give it a little bit of time. It's, it doesn't take forever like some of the articles out there would uh, suggest, but it's not the fastest in the world. One thing I wanna point out is that you can actually utilize the zoom camera, which is about 100 millimeters equivalent, to create some fantastic looking shots with bokeh in both the foreground and the background with something called image compression. This creates extra depth in the images that you can't replicate with the main camera, despite its bigger sensor, because it's closer to a 24 millimeter equivalent. I had fun with this, needless to say, check out the images on the screen. The portrait modes and night modes are fantastic on this too. I mean, Samsung's software processing is as impressive as its hardware in the S20 Ultra. It is a fantastic camera package. You cannot go wrong with this setup. On the whole, the S20 Ultra packs in a lot of hardware and software features into a package that costs half the price of a normal flagship, but you're getting pretty much all the flagship features on this thing. As I said before, I maybe use this a little bit longer than I should have, a couple of weeks where I usually would use a smartphone for three to four days to gauge it and to get a review on it. But yeah, this thing just kept calling my name. Amazing screen, great performance, just sublime cameras, fantastic battery life. It's all here and it's all here for 600 pounds. I mean, that's like iPhone 12 territory, iPhone 12 mini territory. That is a lot of smartphone for the money. And as I said, value does not mean budget, it is by no means a budget smartphone. A budget smartphone is like 200 pounds maybe. Uh, but this, you know, this is a good value smartphone. So should you buy it? Absolutely. What, do you, what have you been watching for the past sort of five, six minutes? Anyway, I want to give a massive shout out to Damien Wild for providing the phone for review today. He sent out that and a bunch of other phones which will be on the channel very soon and have been on the channel before. I'll leave his social medias in the video description. Whilst you're there, please do hit like, comment and subscribe if you're new around here to never miss a video like this one. I want to give a massive shout out to my patrons being continually supportive and check out my social media in the description as well. I'm Ryan Thomas and I will catch you later. Peace.